He is a professor of biology at the University of Virginia. His name is Ignacio Provincio, or you can call him Iggy. And we wanted to have him on because he would like the uh, United States to switch to permanent standard time, not daylight savings time. And the professor joins us now on the program. How'd you get involved in this, Iggy? Well, I've had an interest in this for a long time since I was a graduate student. And I've been interested in circadian rhythm. So we have this internal 24-hour clock that dictates when we sleep, when we're awake. And, and um, so this longstanding interest has been something that I've pursued for over 35 years now. Take us back to when it started. And because it feels like there were, I think, I grew up thinking it was for farmers and realized that it was about World War I and World War II. Yeah, that's correct. Actually, in World War I, um, daylight savings time was implemented for the first time in order to conserve coal. So it was really an energy uh, saving um, thing. And then it was discontinued. And then in World War II, it was then enacted again. At the time, it was called wartime. Um, and then it wasn't until uh, and then after that, all the jurisdictions had the liberty to either have daylight savings time or not. So you can imagine the confusion that that caused. And finally, in 1966, it was made permanent by Congress through the uh, Uniform Time Act. Well, on Tuesday, didn't the U.S. Senate pass the bill to make daylight savings time year round? That, yeah. OK. And, and now it goes to the House of Representatives. Right. And last year, uh, the Sunshine Protection Act was put forth and actually passed in the Senate by Senator Rubio in Florida. Um, but it was stopped in the House last year. And uh, my hope is um, that uh, it will be stopped in the House this year because permanent daylight savings time is the um, greater of two evils. And that, that being, well, actually, the, the second evil would be the current situation that we're in now where we switch twice a year. The best situation would be to, to be on permanent standard time. Give me uh, some of the positives of what we have now, if there are any, in your opinion. Um, I think emotionally, <laughs> I personally like having you know more light uh, later into the night, but it's completely unnatural. So I think that the advantages are really minor compared to the disadvantages. Um, there's some real health consequences to the current situation. So Actually, the consequences are basically twofold. The first is that when we actually move the clocks, the day after we move the clocks, there's a higher incidence of heart attacks. Um, the spring shift alone has been blamed for an additional 28 traffic fatalities every year. So uh, the actual times when we move the clocks are, are actually quite dangerous. Uh, and then in addition to that, um, they're the long-term effect of having a shifted clock being out of synchrony with the natural light-dark cycle. So um, this really all started with the advent of the light bulb. The light bulb has allowed us to be working when we should be asleep. Uh, and uh, our mid-sleep should actually coincide with astronomical mid midnight, right? So the middle of the night should be the middle of our sleep. Are you anti-light bulb, uh, Professor? Is that what you're saying? You're anti-light bulb. <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> no, no, I under, I. I understand the benefits of the light bulb don't get me wrong but it has actually um screwed up our <laughs> um, natural timing system okay yeah. so uh how does this end how do you think uh the house of representatives votes on this um i i don't know i'm a biologist i'm not a, a political scientist but uh my hope is that uh, they will not vote for permanent daylight saving time um but we'll see we'll see is there an ideal nap time during the day? Um, and length of nap. Yeah. I, I think you're you're best off not napping and just, you know, sleeping a significant number of hours during the night. So I would argue that there's not an ideal nap time that you just shouldn't nap. Um, but um, if, you know, if you are sleep deprived, then, um, yeah, you probably should nap at some point. I'm not sure there's an ideal nap time per se. And it's still eight hours? That's, that's eight hours is optimal. I mean, our ancestors actually slept longer. And, in fact, we slept longer during the winter when the nights were longer, and we slept shorter during the summer when the nights were shorter. Um, but if you can get eight hours, you're probably um, doing pretty well. 
you know, <clears throat> the consequences of being out of sync with your environment are, you know, quite severe. There's an increased risk of cancer. There is an increased risk of cardiovascular disease. Uh, there's an increased risk of metabolic disorders such as diabetes. And uh, even for athletic performance, um, uh, an old study showed that uh, West Coast teams traveling to the East Coast mm -hmm. were at a 1.24 run disadvantage by having to travel all those time zones. We have so, uh, one of our guys here, Paulie, is saying in two years, we will not have this. It'll be gone. What do you think? Daylight saving time yeah. will be gone? Yeah. Um, could be. I mean, there was a recent poll by Monmouth. Uh, you know, this poll showed that 44% uh, of the respondents actually were in favor of permanent daylight savings time. Uh, only 13% wanted it to be permanent um, standard time, which I think is the correct way of proceeding. And about 35% wanted the current system that we have. So it is popular. I mean, I'm not going to deny that. But um, just from a biological standpoint, it's not the, the best of the options. Good to talk to you, Professor. Keep fighting the good fight. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's Professor Ignacio Provencio, biology professor, University of Virginia. You can call him Iggy.